Today we'll be looking at a ServiceStack mix template to kickstart your project with GitHub Actions CI deploying to a cost-effective AWS ECS environment. AWS and their Elastic Container Services, or ECS, allows you to use your EC2 service to host Docker applications in a managed environment. ECS orchestrates deployments and management of your Dockerized applications, which can scale and integrate with a lot of other AWS offerings. This can be a great non-serverless setup for your containerized application, but taking advantage of all the AWS services and scaling doesn't come cheap. The mix template we'll be looking at today gets you started with ECS without the need for an application load balancer, or ALB. While the ALB provides great functionality that enhances ECS, when you're first getting started on an idea, this cost can be hard to justify. The patterns in this mix template can be easily changed to incorporate more of the scaling and high availability features like the ALB when you have a stronger need for them. So, if you know you want to use AWS to host your applications, but looking for a cheap way to start with ECS, this video will walk through the steps required to get from zero to an automated CI environment using GitHub Actions. Before we get started, let's go over a few things you'll need. The .NET SDK 5.0 or higher, the Service Stack X tool, and an AWS account. Download links and install scripts can be found in the full tutorial write-up, links in the description. Since we'll be using GitHub, we want to create a new repository for your application. When creating a repository, don't select any of the generated files and leave the repository empty. And now on your local machine, we want to create a new service stack application using xnew. We can make this service stack application with the command xnew space web space ECS app, where ECS app is the name of your project. Now that our app is created, we can validate that it works correctly by opening it in your IDE and running it locally. Most service stack templates come with a Docker file, so if you want to build it and run it locally using Docker, you can do so with the following command, where ECS app is the tag of your Docker image. Now that everything's running locally, we want to push the code to the GitHub repository. With our code now on GitHub, we can see that we still don't have GitHub actions. To add these, we want to use the mix tool. Locally in the root of your repository, run xmix space build space release hyphen ECR hyphen AWS. This will add two GitHub action workflows, as well as an nginx proxy compose YAML and a task definition template.json. Task definitions are configurations that tell ECS how to run your image. Now we want to add the mix files to Git and push to your repository. Once they've been pushed, go to Actions and you'll see a new action running. This is your application running a build and test. This workflow will run every time a new commit is pushed to GitHub. Now that we have our GitHub Actions working as our CI, we want to be able to share our prototype with others via a friendly URL. To do this, we will move on to the AWS environment and we'll need to set up a few things. We'll want a dedicated ECS cluster to manage our deployments to our EC2 instance, a single EC2 instance registered to our new ECS cluster, a new IAM user with programmatic access and enough permissions to handle our initial deployment, and finally the DNS configuration via Route 53 or another service to create our subdomain for our application. Starting from the top, an empty ECS cluster can be created via the AWS console by selecting Create an Empty Cluster and providing a name. Alternatively, the AWS CLI can be used via the command AWS ECS Create Cluster. Next, we will want to create a single EC2 instance to register with our new ECS cluster. When creating the EC2 instance, we want to specify the following configuration. Selecting the latest ECS optimized AMI for your region, ensuring it has a public IP address, using the instance role of ECS instance role, specifying user data with configuration for our ECS cluster name, and making sure ports 80, 443, and 22 are open. See the full tutorial write-up for the details of these configurations. Port 22 is open for our last step, so we can install Docker Compose and get the Nginx proxy running on the EC2 instance. Once this is done, port 22 can be closed again as deployments don't require this to be open. Connecting to our instance via SSH, we can run the install scripts for Docker Compose as well as copy over the nginx proxy compose.yaml file. 
we can use SCP or copy and paste through SSH via our local clipboard. Once set up, we can run the Nginx proxy and the Lex Encrypt companion in detached mode. These will be running on the default Docker bridge network and will detect our application starting up when deployed via ECS. Now that our EC2 server is set up, we'll need to create an IAM user so GitHub Actions can authenticate with your AWS environment. The user will need programmatic access as well as two policies, the Amazon EC2 container registry full access and the Amazon ECS full access. Once created, be sure to download the credentials CSV file as we'll need this when setting up the GitHub repository secrets. Lastly, we'll need to configure our DNS via Route 53 or other DNS provider. We'll want to create an A record for a subdomain pointing to the public IP address of our EC2 instance. Now that our AWS environment is ready, we can go to our GitHub repository and create six secrets. These will be used whenever a release is created to authenticate with AWS and deploy your application. The AWS Access Key ID and Access Key will be the downloaded credentials you got when you created your IAM user for deployments. The AWS region will be the region of your infrastructure, for example, US East 1. The AWS ECS cluster will be the name you gave your ECS cluster. The host domain will be the subdomain you created in Route 53 or other DNS configuration. And Let's Encrypt email will be a contact email address for your domain. Secrets can be created by the GitHub UI by going to Settings on the repository and going down to Secrets. Alternatively, you can use the GitHub CLI by using GitHub secret set for each one. Once added, let's create a release. On the front page of your repository, you'll see releases on the right hand side. Click on that and create a v1 release. Once created, this will kick off a GitHub action for your release process. During this process, a Docker image of your application is getting pushed to the Elastic Container Repository or ECR. After that, the ECS API is called to create a new deployment for your application using the task definition. Once ECS has deployed your application, the Nginx proxy and Nginx proxy companion for Let's Encrypt detect your application has been deployed. It then creates a TLS certificate if one hasn't been created before. This allows your application to be available on your subdomain. This should only take a minute or two at most after your GitHub action has completed. To recap on what we've done, we've created a new server stack application that deploys via GitHub Actions and AWS ECS to a single EC2 instance. This saves the monthly cost of an ALB for all your prototypes that don't need high availability but still want to use the simplified orchestration of ECS. For a production application, the $20 a month cost of an ALB is easily justified and should be used for any application that requires high availability and or more scaling. However, when first getting started, this is usually not required and it's more important your application is easy to share while keeping your cost down. This gives the advantage of having an automated CI from the very beginning, so switching to using an ALB or other high availability architectures is a small change for your deployment process. This pattern can host multiple applications at different subdomains on a single EC2 instance in a unique ECS cluster, making it a great way to enable you to quickly set up your applications and deploy them using GitHub Actions. We'll be making more mixed templates that use GitHub Actions to simplify setting up different deployments, so let us know which targets you'd be most interested in seeing. And as always, thanks for watching.